I buy lots of electronics and I also return or sell lots of electronics. I don't keep everything. If I don't like it, I just get rid of it. And one of the best ways to find out if you would like something is to actually try it and see how it goes. We are fortunate enough here in the United States to have very consumer friendly return policies that protect us from buyer's remorse or any kind of defects or anything unexpected. And if you buy something and you don't like it, you can usually just turn around and return it. If you use something for a few months, then you decide you want something different. It's also very easy to sell with online marketplaces or trade-in programs and things like that. With that said, I don't always make videos about electronics that I tried and for some reason didn't like and end up either getting rid of selling or returning. I like talking about things that I do like more, but sometimes there are products that I expect to love and then something is just not quite right. So once in a while, yes, I have those uh, unboxings or overview videos that I'm very excited about product at first and then at the end after trying it and using it for a little bit I decide it's not for me but typically I try the product first and if I like it I'm gonna talk about it if I don't like it and uh, I'm returning it I'm just gonna leave it at that you know just trying to say nice things about things that I do like and try to avoid saying negative things about things that I didn't like and there are lots of things that I didn't like but whatever here I have Razer Blade 15 this is an early 2020 model with RTX 2070 Max-Q in it I was looking at this laptop for months I've been using a Razer Blade Stealth 13 over here for about a year and I've been looking to upgrade it to something a little bit more powerful and so I've been trying different things but so far, the closest I can get to is another Razer product because nothing else really matches them in build quality and just overall premium feel, and I, I do like that. So we have Razer Blade 15 Base, and this is a laptop I was considering for a while. I was looking at different reviews and um, just waiting for right time to to act on it and um, for right sale one of the best ways to find good deals on laptops in my opinion is actually Best Buy open box program you can get very very good discounts if you buy open box from Best Buy especially if you don't mind trying something like a display model which usually are listed as open box satisfactory and in my experience most of the time they look and feel almost like new with very little imperfections and you get a very big discount. So Razer Blade 15 base in this mercury white color and this configuration and I'll go over the different uh, parts of it in, in a second here but this is an OLED 4K model. This one retails for about $23,22.99 so over $2,000. Right now it looks like they're going on sale because of new model with 3070 uh, being out and the price is reduced to about $1800 and that is already a very good price for something with a 4k OLED screen and the amount of power that it offers is is a good price however they had an even better deal at Best Buy with an open box for a little bit under $1200 and for that price, I was like, yeah, let's go give it a try. Obviously, the worst case that can happen, you don't like it, you can take it right back to Best Buy and return it. And that's one of the reasons I like their open box program, because they offer the same return window as any other product you buy. So it's very much risk free. So I brought it home and I play with it for a couple of days. And um, I'm not doing a full review here. But I'm going to list some of the things that I liked about it and some of the things that I didn't like about it. At the end of the day, I'm actually very conflicted about this device. This is not a bad 
flap out by any means. This is actually really, really good. The amount of power it gives you is pretty insane in the laptop. And the screen is simply amazing with a 4K resolution. So a very nice package overall. Let's see if I find a good angle. I think this is good right there. And this is on purpose. So let's talk about some of the things that I like. Well, actually, I think I'm gonna talk about separate components and then list what I like about it and what I don't like about it. So why don't we go ahead and start with the body of the device. Now, this is a classic Razer shape and design. So very similar to this Razer Blade 13 here. However, it comes in a different color and I really, really like this color. The silver or mercury white as they call it is actually so slick. I love to have something like this Blade 13 in the same color, which they do have, but it's not really a gaming laptop. They call it Razer Book. So the color is awesome. They call it white, but it's more like very light silver. And I also like the fact that the logo here is not green and glowing, but it's just kind of blends in very similar to Again, Blade Stealth. So take a look at this Blade Stealth. Looks cool, but you see what I see here? Smudges and fingerprints. Now you don't have this problem here. And this is another very cool thing about this whole color scheme on this body. It's very fingerprint resistant, smudge resistant. It looks much cleaner. I think it looks more expensive, more premium than the black model. And all the Razer models come in uh, this black color. Some of them have variations of the silver color. So if you can get silver, I like it much better. However, it's usually only available at the more high tier units. Going from the positives to negative about this color, one thing that some people might not like is the fact that there's a contrast between a silver body and white keyboard, but it actually works good. What I found here is kind of interesting, and I'm not going to be able to demonstrate it in the slide in here, but this material, this anodized aluminum in this color, actually reflects light. And so if you use your computer in dark, in the evening, at night, the light from the screen will kind of bounce off and it makes the whole keyboard area and palm rest area of the computer almost like glow. So it stays bright, like it's illuminated by the little light that comes out from the screen. You don't have the same effect with the black model and maybe that's why they call it Blade Stealth. It just looks all black with just your backlight on the keyboard. So to me, it was kind of a negative, a little bit annoying, but some people might like that. At the same time, there are some areas, again, I'm not going to be able to demonstrate, and for that I apologize, but for example, here on the hinge, somehow some of the backlight kind of bleeds through the, the vents in the back, and in the dark, you can actually see, like, the light from your backlight reflects off the hinge from the inside here, just a little bit, but if you can notice it, it can be annoying. So it's a very minor nitpick, but I'll get to uh, bigger things in the new bit here. Let's move to the screen then. So the screen is OLED 4K panel. It is simply an amazing experience using the screen. You can see me in, the, in there too. It goes super bright. I believe it's almost 600 nits. Of course the blacks are super deep and the colors are extremely bright and infinite contrast. It's beautiful to look at. It's only 60 hertz, but I'm okay with that. Uh, I'm not complaining about that one, actually. What I am complaining about is how reflective it is. That's why I keep moving in the laptop around, because you keep seeing myself in there, or everything behind me, and everything that you have around is all reflected, like, in the mirror. 
So this gets old real quick. When you're playing a game or watching a, a movie, in many scenarios you're actually probably not even going to notice that. It just kind of blends in. But if you're just using your laptop day to day and you have any kind of source of light around you, you see, you're going to see everything on that screen. I would call it a negative. I'm guessing it's just uh, the nature of OLED screens because anytime I see an OLED screen on a laptop, it's always glossy. Now we have IPS panel on this blade stealth and it's, it's matte finish. I feel like it's a more pleasant to work with, but of course your colors and brightness is not as good as what you get with OLED. So it's a little bit of a compromise. You're gonna have to decide. Overall, I would say I would go with the OLED screen again. I just wish it wasn't so glossy, but I would deal with the glass for the better image quality. It's really hard to to show in video because even just looking at it now, like on my viewfinder, it looks like this is a more pleasant screen to look at just because there are no reflections there. And you know, this might be the case. Next, what I really like about this laptop, why I wanted it in the first place, was the performance. This computer is simply a beast. It has a 6-core, 12-thread, Core i7-10750H processor and a 2070 Max-Q RTX video card. Also um, a Samsung SSD 512GB and 16GB uh, of RAM. Uh, which is also made by Samsung. So with those components, it's actually an extremely powerful machine. I don't have any benchmarks or anything like that. I can just tell you right now, it does everything you may want it to do with ease, plays games very well. Uh, most of the games you're gonna run at the 60 Hertz, 60 FPS with no issues. And since that's the most that this panel allows, I think that should be no worry there. And any kind of productivity programs like rendering video or working with anything that requires more like processing power, this computer is gonna take care of it, no problems. With that comes a pretty significant negative in my book, and that's the amount of heat this power produces and also the amount of noise this computer makes when it's doing any kind of work. So it's perfectly silent right now because it's just sitting here not doing anything. But if you do whatever, you start browsing the web, any kind of office applications, playing games especially, rendering videos, this thing gets really hot and it gets really loud. The fans kick in almost immediately. All gaming laptops are loud, it's true. But I feel like this one here was especially noisy for me. Maybe it's because I'm just used to uh, something smaller with smaller fans and less power and less heat. So I'm kind of, I was surprised. I saw a lot of comments on like Best Buy and other websites and reviews saying that, yes, it's, it's really loud and really hot. And I said to myself, well, you know, a lot of those people probably don't know what to expect from a Razer laptop. I do, I've used a couple of them and uh, it should be okay. And to be honest, it probably is okay. I could live with that, but it's just another negative to keep in mind. So I can pretty easily get my CPU to hit 100 degrees and thermal throttle on this computer. While say with this one, which is also i7, but it's a four core, I don't get it hotter than 85 or so. And that, you know, that makes a difference when you hit those high temperatures you're gonna start losing performance and the whole body of the computer gets hot. Especially up here, mostly up there because that's where the exhaust is. But your palm rest and the keyboard area, it gets pretty warm too. So if you're using a controller while gaming or another keyboard, that's probably not a problem at all. But if you actually wanna game on the laptop keyboard, it might impact your experience. Let's just say it like that. So some people might be okay with that, some people might not. And moving down to the keyboard, since that's what I just mentioned, 
I like it. The keyboard is good. I wasn't sure about white color first, like I said. Mostly because I didn't know how the backlight is going to look with it. But it actually looks fine. It looks very nice. Uh, layout is good too. What I don't like is just the feel of the keys. They feel just kind of mushy to me. Not bad. Not bad by, you know, by any measure, but a little bit mushy compared to this. Has a little bit more feedback and click to it. So they look the same from the front, but they definitely don't feel the same. Layout is good though. And moving right along to down to your touchpad, there are no complaints there. It's excellent, it's large, it's very accurate, precise. Some people have complained about palm rejection on it. While using this laptop, I haven't had any more or less issues with that than I did with the uh, Blade Style 13. And that is none. So I had no issues with the palm rejection. So no complaints about the touchpad. It's very nice, very large, premium feeling touchpad. And I really like the symmetry. I like that it's right in the middle of your laptop. Like, so I don't understand why in 2021, some manufacturers still have like smaller touchpads and they just like shift it to the side. It just, just doesn't look right to me. Another awesome thing about it is the selection of ports. So we have your power here, Ethernet, USB 3, USB C with Thunderbolt, headphone jack. And over on this side, we have another USB C, two more USB 3 ports, and a full HDMI port, and uh, the lock. Kensington lock port or cut out whatever so the selection of ports is also really good I like that that's definitely a plus and the last thing that I would say about it that is a big plus is the upgradability of it I'm not gonna open it but I did look inside and it has an M.2 SSD and then it has a slot for a second M.2 SSD so you can very easily add more storage to it around this area has two RAM sticks. So both of them are removable and you can very easily upgrade them to something larger. This model comes with 16 gigabytes and I believe you can go up to 64 gigabytes. And also a Wi-Fi card can be replaced. Technically a battery can be replaced too. I mean, it definitely can be replaced. I replaced Razer batteries before. So if you call that a part of upgradability, you can also replace a battery. While we're on the topic of batteries and ports, especially this one here, this is something I'm not a huge fan of, is the power brick. Now it's not a it's not a huge power brick, it's actually probably on the smaller side for powerful laptops. I just don't like this proprietary plug here. Uh, it's kind of big and when you plug it in, it sticks out quite a bit. So, not a big deal, just a little nitpick there. It does not support USB-C charging, and I guess it's reasonable because USB-C is not going to provide enough power to take advantage of full capabilities of this laptop. However, some of the even more powerful ones like a Razer Blade 15 Advanced still offer USB-C charging as an option. There'll be less powerful, you won't be able to play games on it, but you can do it just as an option if you just need basic computing capabilities. And just real quick back to the bottom, this fan cutouts here, right now the fans are not riding so it's no big deal, but probably because they're so wide, uh, just a very random thing, but a couple of times when I picked up the laptop from the table and just kind of grabbed it like this, just you know, picked it up and lift it up, I guess my fingers pressing against it made this mesh here actually touch the fan and it made the, the grinding noise by touching the fan so it, you know, it's, it feels a little bit cheap and it's not a cheap laptop so again a very small neat pick now speaking of small neat picks the web camera is terrible, but they all are, whatever. There's no Windows Hello here, and there's also no fingerprint scanner. That's 2021, that's, I feel like that's kind of lame. 
Um, this razor blade stuff is a year old. This is a late 2019 model and I got it about a year ago. He has a Windows Hello camera and I, I love using it. It's very nice. Of course, a lot of newer laptops have at least a fingerprint scanner. This one has neither. Pretty much all other Razer models in their lineup have at least Windows Hello, except for Blade 15 Stealth. So it's definitely a marketing thing. It's not that they don't have room for it or anything. They just save that feature for more expensive models. And I don't like when companies do that. And finally, here are two of my biggest problems that pretty much served as deal breakers. Number one is the battery. And the battery is pretty small and weak in this one. From my use, I get just around two hours on battery. And that's not doing anything crazy. That's just like browsing web. Maybe two and a half hours is the most I was able to get from it. Now, there are some tricks you can do. You can undervolt your CPU. You can obviously turn down the brightness of the backlight and the screen, things like that. You could probably squeeze a little bit more life of it, but I don't imagine you getting a lot more by doing those things. So I would say from the battery life perspective, this is not a very portable machine. You're gonna wanna be somewhere near the plug all the time. And of course the performance suffers when you run from the battery versus the power adapter. So that was a big disappointment. But finally, and this is gonna probably sound silly to some people, but this is what served as a final deal breaker for me. When I buy a new laptop to replace a laptop, especially if they're from the same manufacturer and if they're more expensive and supposed to offer better experience with almost everything, I expect to kind of get an upgrade on at least the most basic parts like your performance, your screen, your battery life, which it doesn't really deliver, speakers, and stop right here, the speakers. We have nice big speaker grills here, they look nice, but they sound terrible. This might be the worst sounding speakers I've heard in the laptop in a very long time. This is a deal breaker for me. I consume a lot of media on my laptop, I watch YouTube, I watch movies, I listen to music. And I was always very pleased with the performance of the Razer Blade Stealth 13. Is that in there? I expected this to be at least somewhere similar. And honestly, it's just not. If you listen to this laptop kind of on its own in a vacuum, you know, it's gonna sound okay. You probably not gonna think much of it. It's not gonna be bad. But if you compare it with something else, and this is not a new laptop. This laptop is older and it's cheaper and it's much smaller and it has tiny speaker grills. So this is a speaker grill here, another one there, versus this much larger grill in here. So I, I figured this is gonna be a good sounding laptop. So this is the only part of the video I'm gonna do the actual demonstration. Uh, you can actually see the screen, the difference in screen quality. So for many, this might be a much more important thing. And sound might not be important at all, but I want it to sound good. So let's just do a quick demo of a song. This is a royalty-free track. I don't want to get any kind of copyright strikes. And also, let's make sure the volume is the same. Set this to well, 100%. 100% and 100%. Okay. Music profile is on detailed on both. So just want to make sure to show that this is the conditions are the same and turn the volume of the device. Let's start with 70%. And over here, move it to 70%. All right, let's go. Not bad. Now let's try it here. Again. Now 
let's move it up to 100%. And 100% here. Okay, let's go back. I don't know about you guys, but the difference is pretty significant to my ears. This just completely breaks the feeling of upgrading a device. And when they start, you know, when I finally compared the quality of the speakers, I started feeling like sticking with this device versus my 2019 Razer Blade Stealth 13 is actually going to feel like like a downgrade for a few reasons. Like Windows Hello feels like a premium feature. The speakers are much nicer. The screen is still great. And overall, this laptop here still amazes me to this day by basically offering the performance that it does for the package that it comes in. So it's small, it's light. Yeah, it gets smudgy. But I usually keep it on my desk and I usually wipe it off and it stays clean. It doesn't have a problem with the fans touching here. Um, the battery lasts longer. Yes, it's not going to be as powerful. It's not going to run newest games as well as the 15 inch model does. But an overall package, it feels like a very premium little laptop. Now when we look here, it's fast. It's definitely fast. And the screen is definitely beautiful to look at. But if you see the, all the reflections and you see the poor speaker quality and the very poor battery life and the fact it gets so hot and it gets so loud and the fans, they get loud. I mean, you can look up reviews that will show you that. Uh, I just don't have any software to push it right now. And I feel like we've been going long enough. We should probably wrap it up. Overall, I just don't feel like it's a worthy upgrade. If you already use a blade, base model, you're probably going to love it. If you use an advanced model, you're probably going to hate it. But actually, I actually suspect the advanced has lots of the similar issues. Maybe I'll try it next and then we'll see if we talk about that. I'm sticking with the uh, Razer Blade Style 13, still 2019. Right now, it feels like the only actual upgrade for it, for me anyway, is going to be another Razer Blade Style 13, maybe just a newer model. And they have one with 11th gen CPU and a slightly more powerful video card and also an OLED screen. It's brand new and right now it costs two grand. So this sounds like that might be the best upgrade path for me. I'm just going to wait a little bit for some sales or some deals and then I'll see about that one. And this guy, I hate to say it, but I'll be taking it back to Best Buy like right now, right after I record this video, before I even edit it, before I change my mind. <laughs> I do that sometimes. Now, it needs to go. I don't feel like, I don't feel like it's worth the price. Even at that really, really good $1,200, I would rather just keep that $1,200 in my bank for now and just wait for something, something a little bit better. And all of this is my opinion. So if you want to tell me that I'm wrong, Feel free to do it in the comments. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. And thank you for your time as always.